Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we're talking about the lies, the science, and the truth about CBD. We're gonna share scientific studies about CBD. Is it really as effective as people say? How should you use it? What should you use it for? What do you need to be careful of? Dosages? What types should you be looking for? What other sources can you get CBD from other than cannabis? and a lot more. So make sure you stay tuned. And before we dive into the episode, we wanna thank our sponsors for helping make this podcast possible for you. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So if you're ready to activate the greatness that's already within you, let's dive into today's episode and really break apart CBD put it back together and give you a full complete understanding of CBD and how to implement it into your life. So let's first talk about what is CBD, right? CBD is cannabidiol, which is the second most prevalent co compound or ingredient in cannabis sativa. Now CBD by itself does not make you high like THC, as some people think. Um, and there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that CBD has any kind of public health problems um, associated with it. Uh, according to the FDA in June of 2018, uh, they actually approved the first drug called Epidiolix containing CBD to help treat rare and severe forms of epilepsy as it's been found to significantly reduce seizures. Now, all the things we're gonna talk about in today's episode, the scientific studies, we're gonna put links and details and data down below in the show notes and in the description. So make sure to check that out if you wanna research any of this further yourself, as we always suggest that you do, because we're not doctors, we're just two guys that are super interested in experimenting with the ways to improve our overall vitality, health, consciousness, and ability to thrive in the world. And we have been taking CBD and experimenting with it and studying it and wanna share some of those studies with you because we believe there's some really powerful things it can do for you. But more importantly, we're gonna share the science behind it so you can make your own educated decisions. So how does CBD work? Well, it affects the endocannabinoid system in the body. Now. What's really interesting, they found this years ago, that all humans, as well as thousands of other species of animals, have endocannabinoid systems in the body. And this endocannabinoid system uh, has CBD uh, receptors, as well as THC receptors. They call them CB1 and CB2. Now, these receptors are found in the brain and central nervous system, which affects the system such as uh, our motor activity, our pain perception, stress response, and memory. Uh, the, CBD, the CB2 receptors specifically are found throughout the organs in the body, which affect the immune system, muscular system, and cardiovascular system. So to say that the human body benefits from CBD and THC is an understatement. I would say the human body is designed as well as it needs these compounds to thrive. So let's talk about some proven benefits of CBD, some scientific studies, um, and uh, dive in a little bit deeper. Derek? Yeah, I'm really excited about this. I've actually taken CBD, the product that we take, and instantly noticed that I have more mental clarity. If suddenly, uh, you know, I've got, if I have tension, my tension suddenly just drops down and diving right into a study through PubMed. This is, this is a study specifically with 47 people with mul multiple 
sclerosis and those treated with Sativex. So Sativex is a combination of CBD and THC in equal parts. It was an oral spray and for one month they experienced a significant improvement in pain, walking, muscle spasms compared to those of the placebo group. So that's what, that's what I love about those kind of studies is that there's a controlled group taking it, placebo group, that think that they're taking it so that you can actually see, oh, this group had significant improvement that we're taking it. So talking about, you know, that little bit of tension that I mentioned just a moment ago or anxiety. See, anxiety disorders today affect 18.1% of adults in the United States. That's approximately about 40 million people. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And with this one study, 24 people with social anxiety disorder received either 600 milligrams of CBD or a placebo before public speaking. So mm. think of like people already with anxiety. And then you get in front of a group of people. And they get in front of a group of and people. maximize their anxiety. <laughs> so the group that received the CBD had significantly less anxiety, cognitive impairment, and discomfort in their speech performance. So that, that's something that you can actually measure because the people with anxiety might stutter or they might you know, feel a little bit anxious. But so right away seeing, seeing that that was compared to the placebo group as well. Nice, so there's a lot of other studies uh, you can find out there on CBD and its effects on uh, all these systems of the body, central nervous system. One of the studies that I found about CBD specifically has to do with chronic pain. A study from the European Journal of Pain showed that CBD applied on the skin, for example, can help lower pain and inflammation due to arthritis. Another study demonstrated the mechanism by which CBD inhibits inflammatory and neuropathic pain, two of the most difficult types of chronic pain to treat. Some studies, they have actually used as much as 1,500 milligrams mm -hmm. per person per day with no side effects. So that's kind of a significant amount of CBD. Mm -hmm. If you know most products are only having 20 to 80 milligrams per serving, some of these people are taking 1,500 milligrams and they didn't have any gastrointestinal issues, they didn't have any um, issues with the, the heart or the cardiovascular system, so that's pretty significant. And then at lower doses in some studies, uh, the physiological effects that maintain health, including antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and neuroprotection effects, um, has shown CBD is actually more effective than vitamin C and vitamin E as a neuroprotective antioxidant. So obviously protecting the neurons inside your body. And you know, scientists now know we have neurons all over the body, including in multiple organs, including in your intestines, in your heart, as well as your brain, your central nervous system. So it's pretty, pretty incredible stuff. So true. Really, really incredible. And this, I have a little, I have a little uh, excerpt here from Dr. Goldstein that through Project CBD. So Dr. Goldstein is a physician and a medical director at Canna Centers, a group of medical practices throughout California that educate patients on the use of cannabis therapy. Uh, I, right away, I just love that. Like it's specifically, you know, physicians, medical practitioners that are going into the use of cannabis as treatment. Right. And, and this, a little girl who was having 40 seizures a day for years, I mean, constantly on a daily basis and was having, you know, prescription drugs, not seeing any results and plus having side effects from the pharmaceuticals. So they wanted to try an alternative, went to Dr. Goldstein, had the protocol, you know, they started out at a lower dose. I mean, right, right away, they just start out at a lower dose. You know, the first, the first week they didn't see any significant results, but there was no side effects. So then they started up in the dose. Uh, second week, second week there was no re no um, results as far as seizures go, but there was also no side effects. So then it's like, okay, well, let's go ahead and up the dose here. So on Friday they up the dose, and then Dr. Goldstein receives a text from the parent saying, "Well, we upped the dose on Friday, and on Monday we only had 20 seizures instead of 40." Wow, that's huge. Half right away. Holy on, cow! On Tuesday. We had only 13 seizures instead of 40. 
all in one week. Wednesday, we only had nine. Thursday, four. And on Friday, zero. That child is currently seizure free on CBD oil. So this is CBD oil based, yeah. That's incredible. You know, so let's talk a little bit about the difference between where your sources of CBD come from. All right, so cannabis sativa family. It includes both marijuana, as we know, which has a higher compound of THC and a higher percentage of THC, and then hemp. So hemp is like you could consider the brother or the male plant, and marijuana you could consider the sister or the female plant. So marijuana has anywhere from 5 to 15 to even 40% THC, and THC is the psychoactive component in the plant. Hemp, the brother itself, typically has about 0.3, so 0.3% THC, not enough to give you any kind of psychoactive effects whatsoever. That's why if, plant, if, if uh, CBD sources, which most of them in the U.S. right now, um, are extracted from hemp, 0.3% THC, they're legal in all 50 states. Um, but what they've also found is that uh, in a lot of studies that have been done on cancer, insomnia, autism, fibromyalgia, as well as many others, that a one-to-one -one ratio of THC and CBD actually gives you the highest effects. Now, to get that kind of uh, CBD-THC mixture, uh, in, my, in many states, you're going to need a medical card. In a number of states, as more and more are becoming legalized, you can get that as considered recreation. But really, it's medicine, right? And even a one-to-one -one ratio in low dosage, you're not going to get a huge psychoactive effect anyway. And CBD in higher milligrams with very low THC, right? No psychoactive um, uh, effects whatsoever is actually going to give you incredible healing benefits anyway. So it really depends, you know, if you have significant symptoms from debilitating diseases, you may want to go with a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're looking for maintenance, if you're looking for pain management, if you're looking for performance, if you're looking for better sleep, uh, less anxiety, um, and don't want to have to go down the medical route or don't want to have to have any THC really whatsoever or bear, you know, 0.3% or less, then you could just get a standard CBD product. So um, let's talk about dosage of specific CBD oils, tinctures, things like that. So what's really interesting that I found in my research is there's still some controversy on how much someone should actually take for optimal benefits. Now they're finding this out more and more as they do more and more studies. But I found that there are generally accepted amounts based on your body weight mm -hmm. and your current status of health. So generally recommended is one to six milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight. Mm. One to six milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 100 pounds, that would be on the low end, 10 milligrams per day up to 60 milligrams per day. If you weigh 150 pounds, that would be 15 milligrams per day up to 90 milligrams per day. And if you weigh 200 pounds, like I do, that's 20 milligrams on the low end, up to 120 milligrams per day. Now, it's definitely recommended to start lower on the scale uh, when you're starting CBD. For chronic pain or diseases, you can certainly work your way up to higher amounts over time. Make sure that you know your body uh, receives it well, that you don't have any adverse reactions, that you are receiving the benefits. And just as the study that you were showing with this child that her seizures went away, you know, they were very smart. First couple of weeks, making sure at a low dosage, and then over time started increasing and seeing more and more benefits. You may need to do the exact same thing if you want to experience increasing results and benefits. So again, just remember those amounts and take it slow and start building up from there and pay attention to how you feel as you're taking it. Um, and finally, I want to end with um, a lie or a misconception that for whatever reason the general population has been told or is believing that the only way to affect the endocannabinoid system is through cannabis. And that's absolutely not true whatsoever. I pulled up a whole list. There are dozens and dozens and they're finding more and more different ways, hormones, plants, things like that, that positively affect the endocannabinoid system and gives you these same types of benefits. So 
you know, this first question came to me as CBD was getting more and more popular. I thought, well, it can't be, if we have this endocannabinoid system, mm -hmm. <laughs> there can't be only one plant or one species mm -hmm. of plant in the world that affects it, right? So I started doing more and more research and found out there are so many positive ways to affect it. So yes, CBD, taking products like um, this product that we Ooh. take from Performance Tea Recovery, which has CBD as well as a lot of other incredible healing herbs for the immune system, for the kidneys, for the adrenals. I love this. I've been taking it daily and I notice that, you know, I sleep better, I feel better, I recover better. Performance Tea Recovery, one of our sponsors, you can take a look at their link below. Um, absolutely love this product, but you don't have to get, you don't have to benefit your endocannabinoid system only by CBD. Here's a few other ways you can benefit it. Uh, one way is cold exposure. Uh, cold exposure has shown to proven to increase your endocannabinoid levels. So what I do is I've been taking cold showers. You can spend time outdoors in the cold where you expose your body to cold. Um, even a cold shower for two to five minutes is going to, there's, you can do the research on that. Actually, we should do another podcast on that. Mm -hmm. The health benefits of a cold shower are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So um, researchers have found that cold exposure increases the density of the CB1 neurons as well as the vagus nerve. Um, regular caffeine consumption in low doses also enhances activation of CB1 receptors by the endocannabinoids. So a cup of coffee in the morning, a cup of yerba mate or, or green tea or black tea, olive oil. Also uh, having strong anti-inflammatory effects also has been shown to upregulate the CB1 receptors. Uh, tea, for example, green tea, has antioxidant compounds, anti-inflammatory neuroprotective effects, and they found that the catechins in the tea target and bind to the cannabinoid receptors in the central nervous system. Kava, if you've ever tried kava. Mm, I love kava. Very, very relaxing effect every single time that I have a cup of kava. Yeah, you can get it in, uh, in like a powder, put it in water, drink it, makes your mouth kind of slightly numb. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, and it just <laughs> super calms you down. And one of the reasons why, they use the root of the plant and they use it medicinally typically to treat anxiety and sleep disorders because it causes relaxation, um, but it stimulates and supports your endocannabinoid system as well. Um, and it binds to the CB1 receptor and has anti-anxiety effects. Uh, probiotics can stimulate and support the endocannabinoid system. So probiotics such as Lactobacillus acidophilus, one of the most common ones, uh, increases the expression of the CB2 receptors. Exercise, high intensity exercise, something mm -hmm. we both talk about all the time, we do every day and we encourage you to do, also supports your endocannabinoid system. It's been shown to activate the endocannabinoid system as well as omega-3 fatty acids. Um, these are incredible ways to create anti-inflammatory properties in your body, but they've also been shown to increase the synthesis of endocannabinoids and upregulate both CB1 and CB2 receptors. Plants that are really high in omega-3s are chia seeds, Brussels sprouts, hemp seeds, walnuts, flax seeds, and perilla oil. And uh, another one, you'd be like, what the heck? I didn't know that affects the endocannabinoid system is echinacea. Ah. You probably know echinacea for colds, flu, viruses, things like that. Um, it's been shown to reduce inflammation by binding to the CB2 receptor. And there are many other sources and plants and ways to upregulate your CB1 and CB2 receptors. So while CBD and THC are incredible ways to improve your overall health and system, immune system, cardiovascular system, uh, anti-inflammatory effects, anti-anxiety effects, um, improve your performance, your recovery, all these things. You can also improve that system by starting to implement some of these other things we talked about. Eat flax seeds every day, chia seeds every day, um, do high intensity exercise every day, even if 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Take a look at our Fit22 program. Mm. It's 22 minutes of high intensity exercise every day. We'll put a link to that below as well. Um, a, a lot of these ways that you can affect the system. It's about not overdoing it and trying to do all these things at once. It's picking one at a time. Adding the probiotics for a couple of weeks and then add the CBD for a couple of weeks and start a, a regimen of uh, high intensity exercise and start eating flax seeds. And over time, 
your health and vitality and energy levels and healing and recovery and all these things are just going to, you're going to be unstoppable, you know? <laughs> a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> exactly. So, and that's the whole point here at Activating Greatness. Our purpose is to help you maximize your human potential mm -hmm. and that's why we do these podcasts to bring you the research the science as well as our own experience and experimentation to help you up level your life health vitality performance mental cognitive function to the next level that's it for today's episode our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do each week you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you and we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. And a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance tea, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website, and it also works on Amazon. Again, activate 15, and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode.